Sir, are you okay? You have blood all over you. Are you hurt? What happened? I think I have just killed two people. On the night of May 23, 1987, in the quiet town of Pickering, Ontario, Canada, a shocking and brutal crime was committed that would become the centerpiece of one of the most perplexing legal cases in Canadian history. Kenneth Parks, a 23-year-old man with no prior criminal record, found himself in a nightmarish scenario that would ultimately test the limits of the Canadian legal system. Kenneth Parks's life appeared to be unremarkable on the surface. He was married to his high school sweetheart, Karen, and they had a young daughter together. He worked as a forklift operator and had no history of violence or criminal behavior. However, beneath this facade of normalcy, something unsettling was brewing within him. That fateful evening, Kenneth had gone to bed early, exhausted after a particularly stressful day at work. What transpired next remains a disturbing enigma. In the depths of sleep, Kenneth arose from his bed, left his home, and embarked on a chilling journey. He entered his car and began driving, seemingly in a trance-like state, for over 20 kilometers until he reached the residence of his in-laws, Dennis and Barbara Woods. Dennis and Barbara were asleep in their suburban home when Kenneth arrived a tire iron in hand. The manner of his entry is unclear, but it is believed that he had a key or was able to gain access without any signs of forced entry. The events that followed would be seared into the collective memory of those involved. Kenneth brutally attacked the woods with a tire iron, leaving them battered and injured. Tragically, Barbara Woods did not survive the vicious onslaught, while Dennis managed to survive, albeit with severe injuries. After the brutal attack, Kenneth left the scene, leaving behind his injured and traumatized in-laws in their suburban home. It's important to emphasize that Kenneth's departure was part of what made his actions so baffling. He did not stay to confront the consequences of his actions or provide any assistance to the victims. Kenneth had no recollection of what had transpired that night. He could not explain why he had driven to his in-laws' house, why he had committed such a heinous act, or even how he had ended up at the crime scene. His memory was an utter void, and he was found wandering in a confused and distressed state. In the face of these inexplicable circumstances, a question of profound significance arose. Could an individual be held criminally responsible for actions committed during a bout of sleepwalking? Kenneth Parks' defense team passionately asserted that he was not conscious or in control of his actions when he attacked the woods. They contended that he had been sleepwalking, a recognized sleep disorder within the medical community. Expert witnesses from various fields, including neurology, psychiatry, and sleep medicine, were called upon to offer their insights into the complexities of sleep disorders. Kenneth Parks himself took the stand and recounted the horrifying void in his memory regarding that ill-fated night. The pivotal issue at the heart of the trial was the concept of automatism, a legal defense that asserts an individual was not in control of their actions due to an altered mental state or unconsciousness. In a groundbreaking verdict, the jury ruled that Kenneth Parks was not guilty of murder by reason of automatism. They believed that he had been in a state of unconsciousness or sleepwalking during the attack, rendering him legally not criminally responsible. While the verdict provided legal acquittal for Kenneth Parks, it did not unravel the mystery of that night's events. The tragedy of Barbara Wood's death and the injuries inflicted on Dennis Woods remained. The case of R.B. Parks left an indelible mark on Canadian legal history, prompting deep reflection on the boundaries of responsibility and guilt in cases involving sleep disorders. The enigmatic nature of this case continues to captivate legal scholars, medical professionals, and the general public. It serves as a stark reminder that even the most perplexing criminal cases may defy conventional understandings of consciousness and intent. Kenneth Parks' life was forever altered by that fateful night, and the case of R.V. Parks remains a testament to the complexities of the human mind and the enduring mysteries of the legal system.